Good morning, darlings. I just rolled out of bed, hence my fancy pillow-produced hairdo. Doesn't it look fabulous? And I wanted, uh, I woke up with inspiration to post something I've been threatening to make a video of for years. I want to talk today about a guaranteed way that you can spot and shut down abusers early because, frankly, people who've been raised by abusers tend to get in other abusive relationships. And I wanted to let you know how abusers find us because I've had a lot of women who've gone through the same stuff I've gone through just be like, how the fuck do they find me? So I wanted to talk about that a little bit and something I call Schrodinger's asshole. Uh, not actually about Erwin Schrodinger's ass. So, first thing in the morning, just roll that bread, and get my speckly water, and let's get going. I should have, like, theme music here. I don't have any theme music. I'll ask my wife to make me some. She's a musician. Why not? So, the thing that you need to look out for if you've been raised by abusers, cluster B especially, is something called microaggressions. I'm going to see if I can get a little like doobly-doo to pop up here. It says microaggressions. That'd be cool. I'm still learning the software, so. So, what is a microaggression? What what the hell is this and why is this something that abusers do? And why is it something that if you fail, they're going to start upping their game and seeing how far they can push and abuse you. So, here's what happens. You're dating somebody or you just met someone and they're abusive. And remember, um, abusers tend to abuse everybody around them in some way, shape, or form. And abusers have an extremely limited set of behaviors. Sorry. Um, that's the, when you, whenever you hear that doo doo doo, that is something showing up in mod mail for the Just Note communities. If you haven't been there, you should, uh, because it is uh, the life work of me and several other amazing people. Um, and I very rarely actually do anything about it because I suck. So, <laughs> moving on. Apologize for the, the sounds. Um, so abusers do the same thing to everybody. And the first thing that they do is something called a microaggression. It's basically a very small thing. And what they're doing is to see if you're going to respond, call them out, tell them to stop when it's little. And if you've been raised where any sort of negative feedback to anybody is rocking the boat and you're not allowed to do it, or you have issues confronting people, you're going to fail. I've also heard this called shit testing. So, what happens when you first meet somebody, you're first dating them, you were it just got out of an abusive relationship, you're like, okay, I've fixed as much as I can what's in my head that made this like an acceptable situation for me and I never want to go there again. What's the first thing that's going to happen? Usually it's a really small microaggression. They will deliberately be five to ten minutes late. No big deal, but it's deliberate and they're doing it just to see how you react and they don't apologize. So if you just don't rock the boat and don't say anything, next time it'll be ten to fifteen minutes and they'll see if you object. And this grows and grows and grows and then it turns into they you know, they will yell at uh, an inanimate object that they're mad at. And if you say nothing, they'll yell more. They'll start throwing. And I actually, um, one of the proudest things I ever did in Just No Mill is there was a, a girl who was dating a guy long distance. So they weren't around each other physically very much. And he told me, she told me that this was starting to go downhill and, and like, she basically laid out a pattern of microaggressions. Like, at first it was great, and then this happened, and this happened, and this happened. I'm like, did you call him on it at any point? And you don't even have to be a bitch. You can just say things like, hey, I noticed you t you're late. You need to text me if you're going to be more than like five or ten minutes late. I mean, various people have different windows where that's acceptable. But for me, if you're going to be more than five or ten minutes late, you need to call me because that's not cool. Not aggressive, not mean, not bitchy but it clearly states a boundary because boundaries have four parts. You have to decide what you're going to put up with. You have to express that to the other person. You have to express consequences to the boundaries and then you have to enforce the boundary. So in this situation with somebody who's perpetuated, it's like, hey, 
all right, so you're always late. Some people are like that. I'm like that. I have no, no time sense at all. So, like, if you're going to be more than X amount late, you need to text me so that I know what's going on. I don't worry that you were in an accident. I know it's just you being you. See, there's nothing mean there. But it is a boundary. And basically, once they start shit testing you to see if they can just do whatever the fuck they want, when they run across boundaries, they push back. Because they want to see if you're serious. Because you can just say, text me, and then never do anything about it. So they'll call you controlling. They'll say you're a bitch, even if you're being really nice. And you're just like, hey, look, if you want to interact with me, this is the rule. If you're going to be late, text me. Or um, if they start screaming at inanimate objects, you know, yelling at the plumbing or the, something. Or even yelling at the cat. I'll sometimes up it that way. You can step and say, hey, I don't appreciate this. If you're going to go throw a temper tantrum, you need to leave my presence because this is not okay to do around me. I understand you got to blow off some steam. You just can't do it here. And then you have to kick them out whenever they start throwing their temper tantrum. And they will do everything they can to get you to fold. All right? They'll cry. They'll guilt. Um, they'll be scary. You know, um, they'll call you unsupportive. They'll do all sorts of shit. Sorry. I just woke up, like I said. My yeah, lashes are tangled. It feels weird. They will use every tool in their toolbox to get you to fold. And when you see that behavior, you know you're dealing with an asshole or someone who is a predator abuser. So, uh, this lady was walking me through this relationship and I was like, look, here's the next four or five steps. Next time you go out there to visit, he's going to escalate it from yelling at things to he's going to punch the wall next to you. Okay? Not hit you, not throw anything at you, but you're going to be standing there and he's going to hit the wall near you. And then he's going to move closer and he's going to throw shit at the wall near you. And the throw shit and the hit can flip flop, depending on the person. Um, and then he's going to hit you and then he's going to cry. He's going to say, he's so sorry and it'll never happen again. And then it'll happen again and again and again. And it'll get worse every single time until you wonder how the fuck this became your life. So every single step is a tiny little baby step. And what they're looking for is for you to not push back and say, whoa, this is a fucking enough. And you see this with people who are your friends. You see this with coworkers who are slightly inappropriate. And you see this in romantic relationships with abusers. And you see it with horrible fucking relatives who are just fucking assholes. And you see this with, like, grandmas who completely blow past all of mom's boundaries and rules just because they can't help themselves. My mom saw a boundary as a you know, um, waving red flag that she had to bull charge through to destroy. So that did great things for our relationship, which is why I haven't talked to her in years, and the only reason I'll go to her funeral is if my brother needs my emotional support. This sort of behavior destroys relationships. But if you are a... The worst thing is, the people this works the best on, is if you are a kind-hearted, sweet, loving person this works really well on you because a lot of times they can preface the behavior by uh one, one of the tricks of abusers is they'll like they'll tell you things that they've never told anyone before they will confess to you the deep dark secrets and frankly most abusers were abused themselves and at some point they decide it's their turn they want to be the abuser so they will tell you heartbreaking tales of horrible things that happened to them as a child they'll tell you you're the only one who really understands them. To tell them that you've saved them. And then, when they do something shitty and abusive and you call them on it, they will say that you're being unsupportive, you're being mean, You thought they thought that you understood and cared about them. How could you pull your support like that? That is just a way of railroading right over those objections so they can keep treating you however the fuck they want, whenever the fuck they want. It's a ploy. It's a scam. Don't fall for it. It is deliberate. 
and I could tell you exactly how I know it's still work because my mom pulled that sort of shit, and she would go from like tears, snot, like hysterical crying, and if somebody knocked on the door, or somebody called, she would <laughs> Grace residents, how can I help you? It's like flipping a fucking light switch, and until you see this behavior, you have no idea how insanely creepy it is. Like, it's past the uncanny valley how fucked up this sort of behavior is. But it was only like three years ago, my brother pointed out that when my mother was in all of these hysterical states where she was beating the shit out of me, that she was in complete control the entire time. Because as soon as, like I said, anyone knocked on the door or the phone rang, she turned it off and was instantly professional, nice, kindly, principal Linda. Instead of batshit insane, psychotic episode, fucking child abusing Linda, which was the mom I actually knew. So, she could turn it on and turn it off on a dime. Most abusers can. Okay, so now let's go to Schrodinger's asshole. You will run across, for those who aren't um, physicists or d aren't huge nerds who hang out with a lot of people who uh, tell nerd jokes. Ah, refreshing. Erwin Schrödinger was a physicist and a really weird dude in a way I deeply appreciated. Um, he was in a polyamorous quad, and as I am in a polyamorous quad, that makes me happy, but he did it in the 1920s and was uh, such a good physicist he was able to convince universities in America to not only pull him over, but his um, the other members of his quad over before the Nazis um, sort of came to power and objected to Schrodinger because he was very Jewish. So Schrodinger was the one who said if you put a cat in a box and you kill it and there's a 50% chance the cat is in the superposition of being alive or dead until it's observed. As a way of demonstrating how ridiculous certain parts of particle theory were. Um, so uh, the cat is alive or dead and it completely depends on the observer. Schrodinger's asshole is someone who makes a jackass fucking comment, and it's not an asshole comment, it's a joke, depending on the observer. You'll also see Schrodinger's racist. Um, I've run across a lot of Schrodinger's racist, because uh, I lived in the Deep South for the last 20 years of my life. So happy to be in Wisconsin. So happy. At least they're just blunt about the racism out here. Like. You don't run across a lot of Schrodinger's uh, racists. They're just fucking racist. It's refreshing. You don't have to argue with them about the fact that they're being a racist. So, Schrodinger's racist will make a racist comment. And then they'll wait for your reaction. And if you're like, No! Why, the, why would you say something like that? They'll go, Oh, it was just a joke. Pro tip. It wasn't just a joke. They were just waiting to see what your reaction was. And if you object strongly, they will then... Darvo, look at my other video. Maybe I'll like link it up here. I'm still not sure how to do it, but it's one of my other videos that has like the blue, blue frame. Um, and then they will attack you for having no sense of humor, being too sensitive, what the fuck ever. Um, so basically they flip it to being that you're the problem, not the fact that they just made a racist comment. Uh, we just had one on Just No Mill today where a drunk mom found out that her daughter's boyfriend has money and was like, well, your boyfriend should buy me a maid service because I can't keep my house clean. And when her daughter objected, she said, oh, it's just a joke. Nope, wasn't just a joke. That's the backup for Schrodinger's asshole. They say something, they see if they can make it stick, and when you push back, they pull back. It was just a joke. And then if you continue to be pissed off that they said something like, um, tried to blackmail your boyfriend into paying for their maid service instead of them getting off their ass and earning their own money, they attack you for not getting the joke, being too sensitive. Um, you know, and a lot of times you can just shut that down by saying, okay, how is that supposed to be funny? It wasn't a joke. You just said an asshole thing. It wasn't funny. There's no joke there. How the fuck was that a joke? But 
if you do that, they call you a bitch. Now, I will say, this is something I've said for years. I should make t-shirts out of it. Be the bigger bitch. If somebody controls you and gets you to back down every time you state a boundary by saying that you're being a bitch, you probably need to be a bitch. Because you know what? Most of the time, people don't even say shit like that to men. Like, if a guy says, hey, don't tell racist jokes around me, what the fuck? If you're a racist, I don't want to hang out with you. And people are just like, oh, well, he's an asshole. They may be like, oh, he's an asshole, but a lot of times they'll be like, look, he's firm, he's standing for his beliefs. And if a woman says the exact same thing in the exact same time, they're like, God, what a bitch. Just own it. Like, if people who are jackasses and racists and abusers think you're a bitch, it just means they can't push you around. Their tricks don't work on you anymore. So you've been watching my videos and listening to my bullshit, and you're like, oh my god, like this is exactly what Bippy said. So anyway, back to the story of the girl who was like, oh my god, this is what Bippy said. Um, she, she sent me a kind of a nasty message and was like, hey, you don't know my boyfriend. You have no idea what's really going on. I can't believe you would say something like this. He would never do anything like that. He would never punch a wall next to me. He's never been physically violent with anybody. That you don't you don't know what you're talking about. And she flounced off, and I was like, "All right, so flounce, baby. You do you. You know, I could be wrong. It happens. No, I I actually when I see when I see people in like the beginning stages of an abusive relationship, and I'm like, you don't see the red flags, honey. There's red flags. There's a red flag. There's a red flag. There's the entire Chinese army marching, waving red flags." right there red flag baby um and they're like no i love him all right i really really fucking hope i'm wrong i hope that he is prince charming and that you live happily ever after good fucking luck baby it hasn't happened yet <laughs> but um that's because i'm broken and i hang out with other people who are similarly broken so um about six months later I get another private message from this girl. And I'm on Reddit so much I had to look her up because I didn't recognize her username. And then I, I saw the conversation. I was like, okay, this one. Um, and she said, you were absolutely right, which of course, as a woman, just made me thrilled to my core to hear. There is nothing that ladies like hearing more than you were right. She said, you were right. Next time I went back to visit him, he did exactly what you said he was going to do, and then I went out and visited him one last time, and he punched the wall right next to my head. And all I could think of was the message you sent me of how the next step is he's going to start hitting me. And I broke up with him, and he said everything he said he was going to say. He was sorry, he didn't mean it, he was angry, you know, he thought I understood him and his trauma and his, his abuse. He couldn't believe I was abandoning him like that. And he said everything you said, and it almost worked until I remembered that you said months ago, this was exactly what he was going to do, and it was deliberate, and I broke up with him. So, um, this girl broke up with her fiancé slash boyfriend, I don't remember what stage they were at, but if they, whose boyfriend was heading towards fiancé, like they were already talking about marriage. So, um, she broke up with this abuser, and now she knows the signs, and she'll never be stuck like that or trapped like that by a guy again. And I think of everything I've done online, that is the proudest moment I've ever had, where I give out all of this information, um, and I just hope it sticks. And one of the reasons why the mods on Just No Mill leave up stories that are, like, we, we know they're fake. Like, we can track. We can track stuff on the back end. We, we, we know some of the people that are fakers, and to a certain extent, we just let it ride. Because the education in the comments, where like people are teaching each other like how to stand up for themselves and, and spot abusers and break those cycles of abuse, um, you know, like somebody will write a fake story um, involving like a, a, a common one. There's one person who writes a bunch of fake stories where part of um, the story always involves uh, incest. Now that is not to say that the the incest stories on Just No Mill where a mother or mother-in-law um, has sexually predated on the kids are fake. No. There's one user in particular. Um, we've had like six or seven accounts. You know who they are. Um, 
who keeps writing these stories. And their accounts usually have like three or four years of back history posting and other subs. Like, this is dedicated. Um, and I, I know who it is and I worry about them a lot and I try to help them because they're actually in an abusive relationship and like this is part of how they cope with what's going on. You know, talk to them on the phone and try to get them a job and out of state. Um, so we know who this person is and we can spot their stories every single time and we let it slide because of the comments where people will provide resources like okay here's how you get in touch with this service and this service and this service and other people will actually talk about what happened to them except what they're talking about isn't fictional and as long as it stays below a certain threshold um, we'll let it go uh, because uh, the value isn't in the therapeutic effect of telling your story in that particular situation, but there is a lot of val value that happens in the comments. So, um, so yeah, we, we, we do know that there's some, there's some fake stories. And we actually built a sub, just no, uh, just no fan, fan fiction. And nobody posts there. <laughs> they post all of their lies to just no mill because there's a bigger audience. So, um, microaggressions and shit testing. When somebody's rude and they are treating you like shit, call them on it. If, 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 even something as simple as, hey, I really don't appreciate what you did there. That was rude. Like, you'll get some pushback, but they know at that point that that's as far as they can push you. Because what these people are looking for is someone they can push all the way back. Oh, my nails look great, though. Nobody's ever surprised when I tell them that I've been diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. So, um, and for Schrodinger's assholes, they're hoping that they can get away with saying one small horrible thing, and then they push back when you call them on it, because they want to be able to express all of the horrible shit that they have to say. And um, uh, with, with, I want to have one particular caveat for guys. You will occasionally run across Schrodinger's rapist who tell rape jokes constantly. And here's the thing that they found out about people who are actual rapists. That's what they do, because what they're convinced of is that every guy wants to rape women. Some of them are just better at not getting caught. So what they're basically doing is seeing if you're just like them. So if you have a guy who keeps telling rape jokes, and you're like, dude, seriously, that's not funny. And he gets really super offended and calls you a special snowflake and too sensitive, you're probably dealing with one of those shady ass motherfuckers that will sexually assault your girlfriend if he gets her alone and she's been drinking. Just a pro tip. This is something that they have found over and over and over again in psychological studies of people who actually do um, rape women. They literally think everybody does it, that all men are rapists, and they uh, they just want to be around the guys who don't call them out on the shit that they're saying. So, <clears throat> uh, if you have a friend who's such a great guy, but he's really creepy whenever a woman shows up and keeps telling these fucking jokes, you should have big fucking red flags going off. And remember, one in four women have been sexually assaulted, and the average guy who sexually assaults usually has over 50 victims. So it's a small percentage of guys that keep doing this shit over and over and over again. So he could be a really great friend. He just has a fucked up sexuality. But you gotta ask yourself at some point, do you really want to have a friend who's like that? And, you know, there's a lot of toxic masculinity in our culture, there's a lot of stuff, but basically, and some guys, some guys, I will flat out admit, like, I was socialized by the D&D &D nerds, and, like, when I went to college at 15, um, my mom had pseudo homeschooler, she basically ran a small school, and let's just say my social skills were severely lacking, oh boy. The, okay, my social skills were so bad, so bad, that the LARP nerds took me under their wing and taught me how to people. No joke. Like, 
the guys that didn't bathe but once every other week were like, holy shit, this girl has no social skills. It was bad, really bad. And I had to learn how to like interact with real people. Um, and some guys, like, as soon as they're accepted into a group and they've been shunned forever, will just sort of take on, like, they'll grab pieces of other guys. So you could have a really nice guy who will, like, just tell these jokes because one of his friends always did and he just thinks that's how guys, like, male bonding. You need to just take them aside and be like, hey, look, dude, here's the thing. When you make these jokes nonstop, you come across as a creepy fucking rapist and I don't want you around my girlfriend or my sister or my mom, like, or any women. I don't think you're trying to be creepy and give off rapist vibes, but that is totally what you're doing. You need to cool the fuck down. Because I've run across a couple guys like that and I just took them aside and I was like, look, here's the statistics, guys, that tell me. Hey, baby. Um, so basically, you'll, you'll occasionally run across a guy who is just trying to be one of the guys and doesn't realize that he's mimicking creepy rapist behavior. And if, if a woman tells him what he's doing, I'd say eight times out of ten, he's going to completely ignore it. If a guy calls him on it, then they'll be like, oh, shit. And they'll, they'll cool it the fuck down. <clears throat> so... Um, those are two things that you need to look for. And honestly, abusers are always looking for new victims. Always. <laughs> because eventually people get sick of their shit and leave. So they need to keep their stock of victims up. So they're always super friendly and they're super great and you have a fabulous time with them at first. Because that's how they broke you in. That's how they broke people in. But if you start to see someone do shit testing, you need to, like, see that as a red flag. Some people are just bossy jackasses. But if you see the shit testing and Schrodinger's asshole, mmm, mmm, it's probably somebody you, you don't want to get super close to. And if you see that they're being in a relationship, bail, bail, just pew. There are a lot of people to date out there. And a lot of them don't have these particular issues. So even if they're really hot and funny and make a lot of money and are great in the sack, if you start seeing this, there are a lot of other people out there who are hot, funny, and great in the sack. You just have to go out there and meet them. Don't, don't fall for it. All right, that's it for today. Half an hour of me babbling. If you wanna learn more, come and join the crew at Just No Mill. The uh, URL will be on the back end of the thingy. It'll be great. And uh, we will teach you all kinds of fabulous things. Uh, and you will, uh, the, the, the vibe is kind of like a, a bar where everybody knows your name. Like, I've worked really hard in Berkshire and it's a great vibe. It's a great tribe. It's a great crew. And we will teach you everything you need to know to not be abused in the future. Boop.